INFJs in relationships. INFJs are supportive, insightful and intense partners. They value harmony, like to please and love intimacy, especially knowing exactly how to delight and dissolve their partner. INFJs pride themselves on their emotional intelligence and seek a deep emotional and spiritual connection with their partner. They desire closeness and love being the trusted confidant and protector of another's innermost thoughts and feelings. INFJs are extremely devoted parents who pour energy into nurturing deep and lasting bonds with their children, sometimes even prioritising their children's needs over their partners. The INFJ parent takes a keen interest in their children's development and well-being. They will quickly attune to their children's emotional and intellectual interests, gently encouraging them to pursue their own dreams and fulfil their inner potential. When it comes to parenting intensity, few match the INFJ, though this can occasionally spill over into molly coddling. Even here, INFJ parents continue to find ways to keep the parenting flame alive. INFJs want to understand themselves, human nature in general, and to develop a comprehensive conceptual framework into which these fit. They are highly empathic, gifted in understanding people, and often referred to as nature's psychologists. But like all of us, if an INFJ doesn't understand another's core values, they may misinterpret their actions. When in stress, an INFJ will often see threats in a relationship that may be grains of sand, but which the INFJ will hyperbolize into mountain ranges. This happens with both INFJs and INTJs. In stress, all INJs can get stuck in the grip of their inferior extroverted sensing, which Roger Pierman in I'm Not Crazy, I'm Just Not You describes in the following terms. Extroverted sensing has the natural strength of collecting evidence from the environment, people, things, places. The fluid experience of information enables those using extroverted sensing to describe experience as well. But in its compensatory form, extroverted sensing leads to incorrect deductions from a single fact. At times, a simple smell can lead to the catastrophic conclusion that a relationship is over. There is no step-by-step -step logic leading to the conclusion. It is as if the conclusion already existed and merely required the observation of a random fact to allow it to be arrived at. Ordinarily very good at connecting observations to illuminate deeper meaning. When stressed, it may be very difficult to get an INFJ to re-examine their trusted insight, as they may simply find new random facts to validate their perspective. INFJs are creative and will inspire their partner and children with new ideas and perspectives. INFJs need a sense of meaning and purpose in their lives. They need to feel that they are contributing toward a better, more loving world. So when an INFJ has found their passion, they may become extremely driven to actualise their internal ideals in the outer world. This can also lead the INFJ to become so determined to achieve their goals that they may ignore all of their own personal needs. One INFJ university lecturer was so dedicated to her students that she would work extremely long hours, often forgetting to eat and sleeping in her office, such that she eventually developed chronic fatigue syndrome. It should be noted that INFJs, like SFJs, are extremely faithful to their cohort not to the point where they need to attend all social events, but INFJs value loyal, reliable friends. Friends that have stuck by them through thick and thin are often afforded the same level of regard as a partner. This can be problematic when the INFJ's sense of obligation to their cohort conflicts with the needs of their partner. INFJs spend such a lot of time ministering to the needs of others, so a partner may feel excluded or overlooked at times. INFJs navigate the emotional lives of others with care and sensitivity, trying to avoid causing offence, looking for the highest good in others, and seeking to maintain harmony. Like INTJs, INFJs tend to be their own worst critics and demand of themselves very high standards, particularly when it comes to emotional and moral integrity. 
INFJs can also be very sensitive to criticism from others and can regard negative comments as a personal affront. When hurt, even if no offence was intended, they may choose to avoid confrontation and clarification of the other's intention and simply retreat or discuss with their cohort later. The offender may never know. Regardless of type, unexpressed discontent breeds shadow, projection and more discontent. If an INFJ doesn't learn to share their feelings and clarify miscommunication, layers of misinterpretation can build up to the point where the INFJ may become outright condescending of what they believe are another's erroneous values. What INFJs want others to know about them. In a partner, INFJs value mutual support, intimacy, intensity and shared values. INFJs have a deep and complex inner spiritual life, which they only share with those they absolutely trust, if at all. Some things are simply too precious or emotionally intense to be shared with anyone. INFJs like to be appreciated and recognised for who they are, and particularly for their understanding of people. INFJs are themselves great listeners, but also value being listened to. Being consulted and feeling their values have been considered in decision making is important to all feeling types, and INFJs like to know their input is valued. INFJs want authenticity. They are extremely tolerant and forgiving of others' faults and foibles. In turn, they want to be accepted for who they are, especially their insights, which can be confronting to a partner at times. INFJs keep their innermost feelings very closely guarded to avoid hurting or being hurt by others. Emotional disclosure and openness in a partner encourages an INFJ to share more of themselves also creating the intense intimacy the INFJ craves. INFJs are highly independent thinkers on matters relating to people and need others to respect the clarity of their feeling. They also need the freedom to follow their personal dreams and aspirations. INFJs don't want a partner who cramps their style. They will lovingly support and encourage a partner to pursue their own dreams and want their partner to be similarly unimposing. Whilst INFJs love ministering to people, listening to stories of pain can drain them and they may need to set boundaries with others. For the INFJ, it can be difficult to strike a balance between the NI need to spend time in reflection and contemplation and the FE desire to reach out to people. Having regular me time helps avoid emotional burnout. Common mistakes INFJs make. As folks with people insight, INFJs can spend so much time being tuned into what's happening in another person's psyche that they become oblivious to all sorts of problems that are happening in their own lives. NIFE spend such a lot of time tending to the potential and well-being of others that the INFJ's TI can become so fixated on self's obligation to the outer world that the core needs of self are overlooked. If a relationship is valuable, INFJs may also perjure their own values to keep the peace, not speaking up when they're upset or trying to find a more beautiful interpretation of their partner's actions. But if an INFJ hides behind nice words too often, the unexpressed desires of the self can lead to bitterness and resentment. NIFE is naturally giving, and INFJs are energised by reaching out to encourage protect and uplift others. Where INFJs can come unstuck is in failing to recognise that this desire is a self-imposed discipline, a personal desire and need. When this is not understood and a relationship in which the INFJ has a high degree of emotional investment fails, the INFJ may reframe past events in their mind so as to position self as having been exploited by the other. And whilst it is true that the good nature of the INFJ is often exploited by opportunistic partners, INFJs who don't recognise it is their own compulsion that drives them to serve others may project onto those who reject their help as having taken them for granted. Like the INTJ, at times the INFJ can have delusions of grandeur. 
The INTJ believes they have superior insight into the nature of knowledge, which can lead to arrogantly discounting whole areas of information, summarily discrediting views and opinions that cannot be proven. The INFJ believes they have superior insight into the nature of people, which can lead to arrogantly disregarding science and even people, those who don't follow their model. It takes a long time for an INFJ to trust a partner enough to let them into their inner world. And once part of that inner world, they may expect a partner to operate according to their TI model of appropriate social protocol and personal morality. An ESTP husband once complained of his INFJ wife. We go out to the club and I'm just having a laugh being charming and she goes around apologising for me. Look, I live and die by my actions. I don't need the pompous morality lecture. I am who I am. People can make up their own minds. As with all types, when the child function is threatened, the INFJ can go into meltdown. The INFJ's child function is introverted thinking, an evaluation of personal conduct based on social norms and mores. Most of the time, INFJs are incredibly sensitive to the emotional lives of others, so it can be really debilitating to realise they have offended someone. Having spent so much time writing that TI model of how to respect and honour others, the realisation that they got it wrong can be a crippling affront to the INFJ's basic need to be people competent. This can be so mortifying that the INFJ may find it difficult to apologise, preferring to reauthor the event to highlight or accentuate all the other good things they have done, hoping the offence is drowned out of contention. In intimate relationships, the INFJ's desire to re-establish harmony and achieve closure when conflict arises can mean that rather than deal with the issue at hand, the INFJ may simply redouble their expressions of love and affection without embracing the discomfort that this can cause their partner. INFJ deal breakers and caveats. INFJs don't have many deal breakers. Like the rest of us, they won't stand abuse. However, they are surprisingly long-suffering with even incompatible partners for the sake of their children. INFJs are patient and gracious partners who will forgive and forgive and forgive, but when they do finally close the door, there's no going back. Whilst extremely congenial and accommodating in the outer world, the INFJ has extremely deep personal values. Like all introverted types, the child function is highly sensitive and being introverted thinking, somewhat rigid. Both the INFJ and their partner need to be aware that INFJs do not disavow their inner values easily. To change an INFJ's value system requires a careful, even methodical rebuilding, systematically explaining how and why incumbent values are causing difficulties. Partners and cohort are cautioned to never criticise or offend an INFJ's values. To do so may unleash a creative fury, which is difficult for anyone to forget, leaving the INFJ greatly embarrassed and a partner deeply hurt. Any wonder they get on with the morally unimposing STP so well. INFJs are fiercely protective of their children. Do the wrong thing by the child of an INFJ and the severance will be completely and utterly final. In fact, an INFJ in a rage makes a grizzly bear look tame. To finish this brief summary, we go out with a clip of one of our all-time favourite INFJs, Meryl Streep, who displays so many of the typical INFJ qualities compressed into just four minutes, annotations included. This talk is taken from our expanded discussions found in the interpersonality course, What Type Are You?, wherein we show how other types interact with INFJs. INFJs are among the most powerful advocates of psych type, making great teachers and social mediators everywhere they go, something we can all be thankful for. Don't forget, you can better understand your INFJ by learning the science of the psych in Interpersonality's Just My Type course available from our website. Ladies and gentlemen, Meryl Street.
this every year. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm exhausted. Imagine how you must feel. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. It is too small a word. Uh, actually, it's too, too small a word. <laughs> You know, this is really overwhelming, and um, I wish I were her. I really do. <laughs> um, oh, my God, Catherine O'Hara, jeez. You know, there's everybody I love in this room. I can't stand it. And uh, my lovely friends who said, you know, mostly nice things, about me. Even if you didn't mean it, nobody knows that. I'd like to thank the AFI. I am so, so uh, honored, I mean, to stand up here with my idols. And, and I just thank you for uh, AFI for, for supporting the work of women filmmakers. I think that you know, I, I have, I, I mean, it's a great thing. And uh, the more those stories are valued, I think the more we'll see them and the more I'll go to the movies. <laughs> so. Thank you, Don, you know. <laughs> it's just unbelievable what you've put up with. And for your just constancy and, and your great strength and your gorgeous DNA, <laughs> which gave me the biggest, four biggest prizes I, in my life. I really want to thank some people who aren't here, not because they didn't want to be, but because they're in heaven. And um, without them, I, I wouldn't be able to make this silly speech. And so I want to thank my mother and my father, just uh, the funniest and, and saddest and most musical and gorgeous, uh, weird, strong personalities who fought with each other for 60 years and taught me everything I know about drama. <laughs> oh. And, um, Isaac Mizrahi for the dress. <laughs> but he's not dead. He's... <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, everybody that spoke. And, um... oh, I'll get off. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm so proud and, and grateful. And uh, I hope it's not the end. <laughs> Thank you very, very much.